Right then, CSS Ultimate Roadmap. Um, this is going to be an eight part series. We're going to go through the full roadmap. Um, I posted this on Instagram about a week ago. Um, so let's jump in. And the first section is basics. What we need to get started. Um, so we're going to cover CSS syntax. That's basically how the code is formed. Um, we're going to need some basic HTML because CSS is useless without HTML. Um, so we're going to introduce the style tag in HTML and the link tag in HTML. And we're also going to touch on variables, even though, judging by the comments, variables are a bit daunting. And to be honest, the lines grayed out because you necessarily don't need to learn variables because in in an advanced in advanced phase you're gonna use SAS or you're gonna use CSS and JS style components. You're not gonna need CSS variables, but it's very simple, very easy to learn content um concept for the basics. Okay. So if we bring up code, I've got a basic very basic website here. I've got HTML file. If you're not familiar with HTML, then there's also going to be a HTML roadmap where we're going to go from complete basics to complete pro. Um, so this is a HTML file. Um, and what we're seeing here with syntax, um, so we're going to learn the CSS syntax. What we're seeing here with HTML is it has its own syntax. Um, and basically the ML in HTML stands for markup language. And there's many different markup languages like XML, extensible markup languages, and it's very similar in syntax and construct. Um, okay, so the key parts for CSS is the link tag. I guess the ID on this, the tag name. Um, and yeah, let's jump into the CSS file. Um, if we get this side by side, I've got the website here. It isn't anything, it isn't too special. Um, but what it is, is some valid HTML. Um, the key, the key thing is the Google font I'm using in this long line of code um, is not being rendered obviously this is just rendering basic fonts um, and the link there is that HTML is, is nothing without the CSS um, so if we jump into the CSS file we can see let's just collapse we don't need to see much of this lovely website really Okay, so very, very basic CSS syntax. Um, and I've basically chose the three ways to target styles. So if you see the hash at the start, followed by a name, that means that you're targeting an ID. So if we go back to the HTML, we can see that I've put an ID on, on the body. And the rule with IDs in HTML is that you can only have one of them generally. So for many people, ID is very redundant. Um, in this scenario, we're only ever going to have one body tag. So an ID is valid. But equally, we could style the body tag by just saying body. And notice it doesn't have the hash, it's just the name. Um, and then we can take that off. And that's kind of the last you'll kind of see of IDs in CSS. Um, the next one is the dot syntax followed by a name. Um, and that is basically a class. And a class is like its type, its classification, it's what it is. And classes are reusable, so 
very very common in web development um, to make reusable CSS is to use classes um, in this scenario I've used header um, that'll be a heading so there could potentially be three or four headings so by using a class you're gonna you're gonna reuse it um, in this in this scenario we could target h1s um, you know it's preference it's preference I usually I usually reset CSS reset tags at tag level and then use classes um, at production level so you can it's preference really um, so yeah the next thing like we've done in the body tag the p tag is paragraph <laughs> you find in css a lot of things are like some things are letters like p for paragraph whereas body is body but <laughs> but but b is bold so if you did b oh, Bold. You get this bold text, okay. Um, likewise, if we said bold, um, color red, which brings us on to the next thing. If we refresh, nothing happens, and you CSS intermediate levels are going to tell me that's because you haven't included this CSS file in your HTML and you'd be correct because the glue between HTML and CSS is basically this link tag that sits inside head um, So if we type out another link tag, don't ask me what rel is and don't ask me why it's style sheet. I presume it's like a, a type, but why is it not called type relation? Answer me in the comments, please. <laughs> I'd love to know. Um, and then the next thing it needs is this href, which is hyperlink reference, I believe. Um, and VS Code is going to suggest me this CSS file. So now when we save and refresh that, we get our styles. We get the new Google font that we've chosen. And we get colors and any styles that we put into this file. Um, it's also interesting to note now we've learnt this basic syntax that although we've created this in a separate file, we could take off this declaration and then even in the body, we could create another HTML tag called style, which is the next point on the roadmap. And copy the styles in, and it'll still it'll still pick up those styles, even though this body style is inside the body tag. It still picks it up. Okay. So now the really fun part. Oh no! Before before we move on to properties, there's another way to add styles so you've basically got on any HTML tag you've got this style prop and inside of here you can put just inline styles exactly the same syntax So you could even put two in there. And then take that off. Oh. 
and then that style will override your style which is another important part of css which we touch on way in the future <laughs> of this roadmap which is specificity specificity yeah i said that well um and that's how which styles take precedence over which other styles so which style is the most important basically um but that's that's in future um so let's move on to variables by the way inline styles everyone's going to be shouting why would you do that why would you do that um it's a good way to learn the syntax and just see the power of css um but yeah in a production app it's not they're not too practical to put it politely okay so variables um variables i've never actually learned before today and i haven't really learned them before this video so i'm gonna just sort of wing it um okay so they call them custom properties i don't know whether that's a just a css thing like it, css is just weird so it's like we won't call them variables we'll call them custom properties brackets variables um so if we jump in here we can get an idea of some syntax so we can see we declare a variable like this and I presume you need to because it's a scripting language it runs from top to bottom so yeah I'm getting a in the linter He goes quiet while I'm learning it. Um, okay. Yeah, I think I've seen this before. So you have to wrap them in this. <laughs> um, so you got main BG colour, brown. So let's make it nice. So let's do all BG, BG. And then let's go. With a color, uh... yeah, I'm already not not really enjoying them. <laughs> it's a lot more. It's a lot easier in style components. Put it that way. Um, like... Even on their example, they had to make it quite difficult, didn't they? Color, okay. So that's an introduction. It's not syntax, it's more properties for the next video, but the difference between background and colour is it's very confusing. Um okay, so that's all right. Um so that's variables. Um just change it to red just to make sure it's working. Um and then I presume you can just keep adding them. Right, so that was that was the basics of CSS. Um, next time, we move on to selectors. <laughs>